you know there's certain items that will help you get a bank account and keep you in the good graces of the bank when you're in the ATM business? Stay to the end of the video and I'm going to give you all these tips and tricks. Hi, I'm Phil from PDQ Merchant Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, and I help hundreds of aspiring ATM business owners go from zero ATMs to ATM Business Pro in as little as 30 days. Always remember here at PDQ Merchant Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. All right, we're gonna jump right into the video. The top five items you need to know about the banking industry to keep you in the good graces of the bank when you're in the ATM business. All right, point number one. So this is kind of a crazy one. The shift in the banking industry is starting to shift this way. So you wanna get in the ATM business, you got your corporation set up, now you're going to get the, a bank account and you go to the bank and the bank says, hey, you know what? I need to see your processing agreement before we open up the account. And you're like, wait, I just not in the ATM business yet. I got my corporation set up, but I don't have any locations, but I need to get a bank account before I get a processing agreement or before I get a location. Well, the bank, what they're trying to do is they're saying, look, we wanna make sure you're real. We're not gonna open up a bank account because they're assuming you already have a bank account set up somewhere and now you're coming to them because you wanna switch banks or you're already doing business and you wanna switch, you wanna get a, a bank account set up. But I know it sounds crazy, but that's their mentality. They wanna make sure you're real. But you're asking, Phil, how do I get a bank account set up to get into business if they asking me, I have to be in business before they get in bank account? It's, it's the chicken and the egg situation, but that's the way the banks are starting to go. So what you need to do is have a processing agreement set up between you and an ISO. That would be, in this example, that would be PDQ Merch Enterprises. Now, what we do here is we personally vet you guys, your business, and we give you guys a processing agreement and we help you set up that business bank account. So if you run into this situation and you don't know how to handle it, look no further, PDQ Merchant Enterprises, we can help you get that business bank account set up so you can start your journey in the ATM business. All right, so point number two, how many accounts should I get? Now, I always suggest you guys get three accounts, the surcharge account, the general checking account, and the vault cash account. Now, what we wanna do is a surcharge account, that is the money that you're gonna be making from the ATM. So when somebody, goes up to your ATM and it says, hey, uh, you want to proceed with transactions, $3, that's the surcharge account. That surcharge is going to go into a special account that's different from the general checking account and the search and the vault cash account. Now, my recommendation is to keep that as a separate account. Now, some people decide we're going to eliminate the surcharge and they're going to put it in a general checking account. The reason I don't do that is because I try to balance my accounts. That general checking account, I gotta balance that, reconcile that, make sure it's, it has the proper amount of money in there. And all these little deposits coming in on a daily basis go get me crazy. So all I do is I keep a surcharge account. It's pretty much a pass-through account. And all I do is once a week, I move that surcharge money into my general checking account, make a journal entry, and it's very easy and it balances. Otherwise, I have to make one every day and that becomes tedious, so I get crazy. So I don't do that. But you guys can run your business how you want. The other one that I think is very important is the Vault Cash account. It's a separate account that is different from your general checking accounts, different from your surcharge. That's the money that when you put the money in the ATM, let's say $5,000, and somebody takes out $100 at a time, that $100 will be deposited into your Vault Cash account. And then once a week, or once every two weeks, or a couple times a week, you're gonna take that money out of the cert, out of the vault cash account and you're gonna go put it back into your ATMs. You're gonna rinse and repeat this process. This also shows total transparency for the bank. So they know, hey, you're not commingling funds, you're not jockeying the money around. It's always, you take the money out and the money comes in via ATH every day, same amount. So this will ensure total transparency for the bank. He won't be commingling funds and he won't get the banks all excited about hey, what's going on in your checking account? Because they can totally see that you're taking money out however many times a week, and then you're putting the money back in through the ACH from your ATMs. So if you're interested in starting your own ATM business but didn't know where to start, stay to the end of the video, and I will share with you our checklist on how to start the ATM business the right way, even if you have zero experience in business or the ATM business. In this checklist, I will share with you the five things you need to start your profitable ATM business so you can build a passive income source for your family. 
you'll have a clear roadmap towards ATM business success so you can earn between $250 and $1,500 of passive income every single month. All right, let's get back to the video. Lesson number three. Hey, Phil, I got a vending machine business. I got a little real estate business. I got another business. Can I put the ATM business in there? Now, I would say, you know what? It's always best to keep the businesses separate, but if you already have established and you wanna just do a side piece of your business, you know what? You could use that existing business as the catalyst, but keep in mind, you, you have to open up two more accounts, one for your surcharge, one for your vault cash. That way, those are separate in that business. So let's say you're operating a vending, vending machine business. Now you got your ATM part of that business. It's just another part of your existing business, but you're keeping the vault cash separate. You're keeping the surcharge separate. That way, it's separate, it's easy and you can see on a line item how much money in the ATM business and you can always make sure that the default cash is just rinse and repeat. It's not co-mingling with your general checking account. I don't recommend it, but if you wanna do it, you can do it that way. Point number four, MSB. A lot of times what you're gonna get is you'll get an inexperienced banker who will say, oh, you're in the ATM business, that's a money service business or MSB and that's a higher rate. They might charge you a couple, $250 a month to have that checking account they're gonna charge you all these really absorbent fees. What you wanna do is you wanna do your due diligence before. You wanna get a copy of what an MSB is. MSB, basically in the banking world, is you're selling currency. We're not selling currency. We're providing a short-term loan and as the convenience for your customers. You're not selling the currency. So because you're not doing that, the ATM business is not a money service business. You don't need to go into that other category. That's what they consider a high risk category. And we're not high risk, okay? We worked real hard to change some of the laws on the FFIAC report, and that'll help minimize what, what they call high risk. And, and this is gonna be a good thing in the future for the ATM business. We were successful in the ATM industry of doing that in the 20, early 2022 season. So coming down the pipeline, it should be very easy or easier for ATM business startups to get a bank account. Point number five, if you guys are thinking about adding Bitcoin to some of your ATMs, Make sure that you don't, just a little tip, make sure that you don't mention that you're in the Bitcoin business because when you first start out, you won't know how to answer these questions when you're filling out the paperwork for your ATM business. So the Bitcoin, if you do add Bitcoin onto your ATMs, you're not actually selling the Bitcoin. What's, what's happening is when somebody goes to do a transaction, it's taking it off to another platform. They're selling it over here. It's bringing it back over to the ATM and dispensing money. So you're not selling Bitcoin. They're, you're just adding, you're just putting an add-on or an added value onto your ATM to allow you to do that. Now, there are certain companies that are, that are doing that. And so I just want to make sure that if you guys do decide to do some of that with those existing customers, that you don't put that on your, when you fill out the application, that you're doing Bitcoin. And if you decide, hey, I got shut down over here and I'm going over here, make sure that you don't put that. Again, you're not selling Bitcoin. It's just a value-added service in case you guys decide to do that. And point number five, that last one was a little bonus. Point number five is make friends with the general manager or the vice president or the president of the bank in that branch, okay? Because Or, or the manager of that branch because that is the person that's gonna help you once you open up the account, you open up the account and they said, all right, we're great, everything's good and you're going around and all of a sudden that branch manager leaves. And now you get a new one and you know what? They're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I wanna do this and then he shut you down. So you gotta make sure friends with the branch manager and then also make friends with the assistant branch manager because they will in, ensure that you stay at the bank and when that when that branch manager leaves, maybe that assistant branch manager will now become branch manager or they'll get a new one in, but that uh, assistant branch manager will also keep you in the game in case they wanna get a little kitty wampus and kick you out of the bank just for no apparent reason, just because maybe they don't like the ATM business. So if you're thinking about getting into the ATM business, I wanna invite you to my free checklist entitled ATM Business Passive Income Checklist. Five things you need to start a profitable ATM business. Where I'll share with you the five things you need to start a profitable ATM business. So you can start earning passive income, make more money and spend more time with your family. So click the link down below. Again, this is Phil from PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, where we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. Thank you guys very much.